So the Bank of England have raised rates again, 0.75% to 3%. What does it really mean? I've just watched the live feed of the governors and the, all the suits out there talking about the various things and various steps they've had to look at and various uh, things that they could predict. Um, let's put it in plain English. Let's talk about it simply um, because there's a lot of assumptions there and there's a lot of projections there. Where were those projections a couple of months ago? Where was the projection that interest rates were, well, mortgage rates were going to go 6% plus? Um, so let's really talk about some of the things that they've mentioned, some of the things they haven't mentioned. Uh, and I would love to hear about your views on this uh, announcement and what you guys think about the whole thing. Hi, it's Pyam here from Niche. Right, so they've made this announcement. Um, from what I'm hearing, there's a lots of ifs and buts and ahs and if this happens and if that happens and this happens and we don't think. Basically, from the, from the sounds of it, uh, the bunch of suits of the Bank of England have decided that they need to come and calm the markets down. Yes, they've raised interest rates. I actually thought rates should go up by 1% and I thought they would go up by 1% rather than 0.75. Um, I, I was wrong. Um, no big deal uh, but what I would say is they've obviously come back with 0 0.75 and in their calculations that's enough um, now everybody was really is it was expecting this with everything everything's always leaked through the through the papers anyway so you know yesterday all of a sudden it was 0 0.75 everybody was predicting so a lot of this stuff gets leaked beforehand um, but what they were actually saying was interesting, um, and especially the, the line of questioning the journalist um, went under. So one of the questions was, you know, do you think um, the lenders have taken advantage of this uncertainty and cashing in and quickly raise their rates up? Um, and do you think that, uh, you know, for those lenders, uh, they, have, they, um, uh, have they been treating customers fairly from that perspective? And the Bank of England sort of guy sort of sidestepped it a little bit and said, look, you know, it'll be interesting to see how quickly they will bring things down. Um, you know, we've seen them go up very dramatically. How do they come down? Now, I've explained this before. It's not necessarily the lender's fault. Uh, it's really the money market. OK, the, a lot of the lenders will react to those money markets. OK there are some lenders that obviously don't rely on the money markets to get their monies but a lot of them will so um, as, that's looking at it too simplistically really um, I don't think it's the lenders are cashing in I think the lenders are are just protecting themselves because they didn't want to be sitting there and a lot of them are you know they've, they've, they've been sitting there at, you know low rates uh, where where you know their they're borrowing um, funds are more expensive so that's one thing the bank has sort of said, look, you know, there's going to be interest rate rises, but we think it's going to level itself out around the 3% mark. Um, but they weren't really committing to it. And let's be honest, their projections, let's look at their projections three months ago. Let's look at their projections last year. They were predicting that interest rates would go up, but they didn't believe that it would go up so quickly. Um, and then they uh, drew some uh, comparisons between us and the US. Obviously, the dollar has been performing really well against all currencies. So not just the pound. Pounds tumbled anyway. But, you know, the euro's not performing very well against the dollar. So they sort of earmarked the dollar and saying, look, look at the American economy. It's actually performing much better than us. And they've, they've, you know, their gas prices haven't been affected like us. But I've just come from America. Interest rates are around about 7%. If you had to go for a mortgage right now, they're about 7%. So an interest rate is 7%. They raise their rates higher. Uh, um, the Central Reserve raised their rates higher sooner. Um, and inflation is ripe up there. I mean, I've come back from, I've come back from California. And honestly, guys, I've, I've never paid six well six dollars is pretty much six pounds now right and i paid six dollars for some strawberries in a supermarket i paid like five dollars i think four dollars fifty for some lettuce okay so inflate it's not great over there there's no point pointing over there and saying well they're, they're actually doing okay because they've got because they've got the dollar they're in trouble over there um so um and interest rates are high over there mortgage rates are high um so it's definitely not 
you know, somewhere to look at and go, well, they're, they're doing okay, because I don't think they are. I think they're under it um, immensely. The, the cost of living over there is huge, okay? So um, what do I take out of this? I just think they are buying time. I think they're trying to calm the markets down. Uh, I think they have helped in terms of stabilizing the, the market, certainly in, uh, with, with their approach, and I think they will do so in the future. Um, I think if you are someone who's got a mortgage right now um, and you don't have to lock in right now, um, I would sit it out. Uh, go and get your mortgage offer. So one of the pieces of advice I can give, well, not advice, information, very important, not advice, is... Um, you know, if you're getting a mortgage right now, uh, mortgage offers are typically lasting between four to six months. Um, so once you've locked that in, there is potentially a chance that you've got that rate locked in. But if rates drop, you could go back to your existing lender or your, your the lender concern or the mortgage broker and say, look, I can see this rate has now dropped to this. So that 5% rate's now come to four and a half or that 6% rate is now 5%. Can you get me a new mortgage offer? Now, Bearing in mind, sometimes they may have to rerun affordability for you. They may rerun a credit check for you, but it may be worth it. So um, I wouldn't put things off. I would go for the remortgages if you have to or go for the purchase if you have to. But keep in mind, you have got this space, OK, because from what the Bank of England was saying is, look, you know, we believe it's going to stabilize the market. What we've done, what we were trying to do, the whole point of this was trying to stabilize the market, try to bring the costs down. And they believe that that will, should go into mortgage rates. That should follow on mortgage rates. They don't know how quickly that will go into the mortgage rates. However, they believe it should. So if you are someone who's fixed in for a five-year fixed or going to fix in for a five-year fix or a two-year fix or whatever it is, I would start because two-year money's dropped down as what they've mentioned. So I would sit tight, maybe get your mortgage offer, but then before you get in a mortgage offer, just find out what the process is if you had you know, within a couple of months, if you found a better rate with the same lender, what is that process? Um, obviously, everything's subject to terms. Speak to your mortgage broker, independent mortgage broker, or speak to your lender direct. Get some advice around that. Don't just go and do it with an Lily because you might find yourself that they're having to rewrite affordability, for example. If they rerun the affordability and the affordability has changed, uh, and the lender has decided they've changed the affordability, you might not even be eligible for that offer. I had this uh, a couple of months ago. Client came back to me, he said, Payam, I've bought a property for 240. I've now negotiated the down to 225. Um, can you get me a new offer on 225? The problem was, since they got his first mortgage to his second mortgage, um, the rates have changed and the lender's affordability model changed. What happened was the lender said, never mind the mortgage amount that I was going to give you. I can't give you that now. I need to give you £10,000 less because of the affordability. So these things do, do have consequences. And that's why we always say speak to an independent mortgage broker simply because they will be able to double check these things before you start submitting stuff. Um, so, yeah, let me know what you think. Um, bit of waffle, really, in terms of what they've come back with, all of those projections. They're subject to change. They've always left the wiggle room there. You know, we don't know what's going on with the gas prices. We don't know what's happening with the war. We don't know what's going on really with the economy. We know that they predict there's going to be a, a, a two-year recession, but then they've just moved on that and they said, well, we can't actually tell you. It really depends on, on where the market's going to be, whether it's going to be two years, two and a half years, three years, really. They couldn't really predict it. They said, we'll just play it by ear. And essentially, we'll react to the markets as and when we have to. We know they're going to raise interest rates further. Um, they, they pretty much came out and said that. Um, yeah, let me know what you guys think about the whole process. Let me know if you've watched their um, the television sort of um, uh, interviews uh, and the questions uh, and what you picked up from the dialogue, you know, the, 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 the reporting. Take care. All the best. The content of this video does not constitute giving advice. It's purely for information purposes. All cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker. As a mortgage is secured against your home or property, it could be repossessed if you do not keep up mortgage payments. Niche advice is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority.